On the 29th of April, Prime Minister Narendra Modi delivered an address at the inaugural ceremony of Semicon India Conference in Bengaluru, where he stated this: "To establish India as one of the key partners in global semiconductor supply chain." He further stated that a new world order is forming and that India must seize the opportunity. India's consumption of semiconductors will cross 80 billion dollars by 2026 and 110 billion dollars by 2030. Semiconductors are very integral to the functioning of critical technologies that are of both commercial and strategic value and importance. Beat your mobile phone or tablets to a car or rockets. Semiconductors are something that the world is highly dependent on as technology progresses. For far too long, India and the world have been dependent on China for the supply of semiconductors, and the details get murkier as we compare the biggest manufacturers of semiconductors globally. but it is largely accepted that the taiwanese proudly hold the patent at this point in time uh, this is especially because taiwan's semiconductor sector accounted for a whopping 115 billion dollars which is roughly about 20% of all the uh, global uh, semiconductor industry in select uh, you know foundry operations for instance Taiwanese companies actually account for 50% of the world market with the Taiwan Semiconductor Manufacturing Company which is the TSMC being the biggest player in the foundry market. India has been making very serious attempts to build a semiconductor uh, ecosystem that includes uh, domestic chip manufacturing industries. The government of India recently set up the semiconductor mission uh, which is known as ISM India Semiconductor Mission and invested 10 billion dollars which is roughly about 76000 crore Indian rupees to attract investments to India and make India into a global hub of semiconductor manufacturing and this was linked with the PLI scheme which means a uh, production linked incentive which will be spanned over the period of 6 years and nearly 2.3 lakh crore rupees will be infused as capital and will be incentivized to these manufacturers who invest and manufacture in india now it seems that the government's efforts are already bearing fruits because the international semiconductor consortium ismc announced earlier this month that they will be investing nearly 3 billion dollars which is roughly around 23000 crores in karnataka to set up a chip manufacturing plant ismc uh, the organization that we were talking about they represent a consortium of investors led by the abu dhabi based next orbit venture and leading chip manufacturer towers semiconductors Now ISMC interestingly is also one of those applicants for the Modi government's 10 billion dollars production linked incentive a uh, scheme uh, PLI scheme for semiconductor manufacturing Now what they have done is they have signed an agreement with the government of Karnataka for setting up India's first and largest semiconductor fabrication unit In this regard a memorandum of understanding has been signed between the department of information technology and ismc which was also welcomed by the state's chief minister mr basavraj bommai who actually said this he said karnataka understands that it's not just the fiscal incentive that matters but availability of a conducive ecosystem and overall ease and operations are also important ISMC further said that it will set up a 65 nm analog fab in technology partnership with Israel based Tower Semiconductors now ISMC had earlier acquired uh, Tower Semiconductors and if what ISMC claims to be true they will be adding and creating at least 1500 uh, or 1500 direct jobs 
and nearly 10,000 indirect ones. Interestingly, ISMC was also looking at a couple of other states apart from Karnataka for uh, investing, which includes the Dholriya Special Investment Region of Gujarat, but it chose Karnataka. Why did it do that? This is where things get very, very interesting. Karnataka was picked by a global consortium over a few other states that were in contention. We are not just talking about the $3 billion that is going to be invested in Karnataka, but the state has also been at the forefront of FDI investments in India. This is happening in spite of what looks like a media manufactured motivated campaign by a certain section of the press for alleged persecution of minorities, controversy over the anti-conversion law and the hijab controversy. Why would investors, especially in their right minds, still choose such a place is the question that needs to be asked. Ladies and gentlemen, declutter all the media manufactured controversies. The reasons that you are going to find is going to be very interesting. Next Orbit Ventures MD Ajay Jalan gave his reasons as to why he picked Karnataka and Karnataka is one among the ideal destinations for investments and investors. He cited water, power, access to talent, quality of life for the talented engineers and customized incentives and a decisive and a proactive chief minister and his team were the primary drivers behind this move. And it is true in a sense of speaking, because Karnataka has already emerged as one of the top destinations uh, and top recipients, in fact, uh, with nearly a 48% share of the total FDIs in India in the last three quarters being invested in uh, Karnataka. The FDI inflow to Karnataka has been very diverse and has been across all sectors. And this includes aerospace, defense manufacturing, agrotech, fintech, biotech, nanotechnology, electronics, drone technology, hospitality, food processing, hardware, electronic system design and manufacturing or ESDM as you name it. Anything that you say Karnataka has had investments in that uh, particular regard. If we were to analyze the reasons behind why Karnataka has emerged as one of the hot favorites for investors in India, we get nearly five reasons for it. One is incentives that are announced by the Karnataka government. For instance, in 2020, the BJP government in Karnataka, in a bid to provide a further fillip to the ESDM sector, announced a slew of incentives. The incentives announced include 25% subsidy on land only areas um, in other than Bengaluru urban and Bengaluru districts, uh, Bengaluru rural districts and 20% subsidy on plant and machinery. The FAB is likely to come up in Mysore and ISMC has sought uh, nearly 150 acres of land uh, in uh, Konchanahalli industrial area in Mysore district. Konchanahalli is just 5 kilometers away from the Mysore airport and now the connectivity between Mysore and Bangalore is further improving whether it is through roads or even flights are available these days between Bangalore and Mysore. And that is, the, uh, that is the precise condition of the connectivity between those two cities. Government of Karnataka had identified prominent land parcels, namely uh, Kunchanahalli industrial area in Mysore for setting up that particular electronics manufacturing cluster. Now this cluster will be soon connected by the inaugurated 10 lane expressway from Bengaluru which will further incentivize such investors to set up industries in those particular areas outside of Bengaluru and not just in Bengaluru. The second reason is existing ecosystem which is unmatched by any other state is provided by Karnataka. Now why do we say this? Karnataka is home to nearly more than 300 export oriented manufacturing unit and the talk of late has been of setting up unicorns and big companies which can boost manufacturing in India. Uh, 
Karnataka is the largest chip design hub in India, consisting of 85 fabulous chip design houses and is the leading producer of aerospace and defense equipment in India. The state's total contribution to national share stands at 50% in electronic product companies and 40% in electronic design. Karnataka had several companies in the past uh, and currently which include Qualcomm, Siemens, uh, Vistron, Samsung, AT&S, AMD, uh, NVIDIA, Intel, Cisco as a part of that crucial ESDM system uh, ecosystem that we were discussing earlier. The third reason is the human capital that Bengaluru offers. Because Karnataka and Bengaluru in particular about uh, roughly about 20 years ago pioneered the IT and BT revolution in India. Today, it is known as the Silicon Valley of India, as everybody will be aware. It has tremendous human capital pool. People come from all over the world and all over India to find jobs in Bengaluru. And it has a very high quality education system with some of the top prominent colleges in India being present in Bengaluru. The depth of the electronic system here is absolutely formidable. Almost all leading global chip, chip manufacturer, uh, chip makers, and chip design firms have their design centers already in Bengaluru. Yes, the infrastructure is a little challenging for uh, that particular city because originally it was made as a city that was supposed to accommodate only a million people and not more than that. But today, obviously, there are uh, more than one crore people or 10 million people and it's slightly more than that. But that is where it stands and the infrastructure is in a bit of a trouble. But in spite of that, uh, there are ring roads coming up, there are suburban rails coming up, there are metro connectivity which is increasing constantly. And this is something that acts as an incentive to anybody uh, who are planning to invest in this particular city. Now the fourth reason is the power situation in Karnataka gives it an edge over the other states. Uh, especially because India has been facing a bit of power shortage due to the huge surge in demand uh, due to heat waves sweeping across the country and even with the economic activity peaking after the pandemic has uh, you know, receded to a certain extent. This includes neighboring states of Karnataka like Tamil Nadu, which have faced power cuts um, acutely. But Karnataka has somehow completely insulated itself from a power shortage through a judicious mix of renewable and non-renewable resources. The state has also installed a solar capacity which goes over 7000 megawatts. So it goes over 7000 megawatts. And finally, one of the most important reasons which acts as the last but not the least incentive is the water situation. Because these fabs uh, require a lot of good quantity of water and reliable and continuous supply of it. On this front as well, Karnataka is blessed with abundant water resources, especially in the southern districts, uh, and that has an edge. Overall, combination of a good investment climate, proactive government policy, abundance of human capital, and an already entrenched electronic ecosystem seems to have swung it for Karnataka. Modi government's own incentives schemes for attracting global semiconductors with a slew of incentives is actually paving way for realizing India's semiconductor ambitions. And Karnataka is set to play a very instrumental role in it. The ongoing war in Ukraine will definitely pose a challenge to India's ambitions since a lot of the raw materials that are used in semiconductors manufacturing come from Russia and Ukraine. But having said that, discussions between India and Taiwan to sign a free trade agreement are in progress and that may be a possibility sometime in the future. And if this is achieved, India's goal of becoming the global hub for semiconductors manufacturing will reach a step closer as Taiwan produces a significant majority of these semiconductors that's exported globally. Overall, this news uh, from Karnataka comes as a shot in the arm for India's ambitions 
to become the global hub for semiconductors manufacturing.